Hey guys, I'm out here at Eaton Canyon with my main man, four-time club champion, Maurice Mishuk. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Awesome. You want to play some golf today? I do. I'm looking forward to it. Would Excuse you me. be willing to give me some tips? Absolutely. <laughs> All know, right. I don't know if I have any really to give you. you. You've been playing really well, so. No, well, the thing is, is like these guys are just so, they're just cleaner at every little bit of the game than I am. They're a little better chippers, a little better putters, but I've been picking up a lot just by watching. So I'm excited. Let's have some fun. Let's do. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Good to go. No, time not the present. Let me see. Hey guys, so you know I've been strengthening my grip lately and uh, a lot of people have been saying that I'm swinging more like Mo Norman. But the funny thing is that the strong grip fader that I actually admire the most is Lee Trevino. You know, there's a lot of guys with strong grips that hit fades. And uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. And I've actually made my backswing a little more compact, but you know, I'm forever tinkering, but we'll see how it does today. And uh, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. So what I've been uh, trying to do is is keep this right elbow under, yeah, like this, as because I yes. can do that and Here you go. it doesn't always work, but sometimes it does. little fade in the middle of the fairway that's all one needs see the thing I love about watching Trevino is it's like he just it's like an automatic he's not even sweating it. right he steps up to the ball and he knew exactly what he was gonna do every time pretty pretty swing thank you so let me ask you real quick, because you, you watched Trevino growing up a lot, right? I did. I now, did. didn't he just seem to have all the confidence in the world the ball wasn't going to go sideways? He knew it was going to cut from left to right every shot, and he could put it in the middle of the fairway. That was the secret. Wow. What's your secret? Try to keep it in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I'm amazed at how, like, do you just go by feel? Like, do you just look at the pin and say you're like, 70 yards or whatever and eyeball yeah. it. And it's completely a field shot because you can't, you know, it's, it's not a stock shot. It's one that you've got to really practice and pick the team. Nice pick. Oh, right on my Oh, right. So I ended up hitting the ball about 20 feet past the pin. That was a pretty good shot, middle of the green. Man, Mose was right on line, but he had a little too much club. But there's something interesting about the way Mo putts. He actually looks at the hole when he putts and from a long way away, not like Jordan Spieth who looks when he's close. Oh, baby. <laughs> That's, uh, you don't expect that too often. So you look at the hole when you putt. I do. It's How long have you done that? 20 years. Before Jordan Spieth? Way before Jordan Spieth ever came on the, on, on the scene even. <laughs> what does that do for you? Well, it's like most hand sports, hockey, racquetball. I mean, you're not looking at the ball at, at impact. You really can't be, it's a thing in motion. So you gotta believe that you have this small little motion at the bottom of your swing in comparison to a slap shot in hockey, which is why I grew up playing, so I can relate to a big motion. And it's just, now feel it in, feel it with your hand and your eyes, because your eyes are determining the speed you really need to hit it. And if you struck it on the line, you're, you can make some. It works. It's a 
beautiful putt. Thank you. Wow. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect it, you know what I mean? You just, but belief. Wow, you did expect that. it. You did expect to make that. What are you talking about? You got to. You got to believe you can do it. Without a doubt, that's the path of the battle of making it happen. You see, I was looking at the hole. No, I didn't. I did. You were, really? <laughs> I did. The you tried time. it just for the fun of it, and it went in. <laughs> Are you serious? That's great. That's that's what it's all about. Hit a solid shot, but it just wound up in the left rough. So I try and hack it out and I wind up being short of the green. Mo well, thumps it up there, but he's uh, on the front as well. It's a little chip shot. Ooh, I like this. Come on, baby. Go 45 degree nice. pitching wedge, bump and run. I think of it sometimes it's like I'm holding the ball in my hand and I'm feeling that motion. Oh, as really? As the distance. So I'm very right hand dominant in that cutting style, uh -huh. thinking I'm pitching a ball with my hand, under hand. Mo really makes it look easy. And like, he's talking about just feeling like you're rolling the ball up. His touch is just spectacular. All right, I didn't quite get all of it, but hey, I got an easy tap in, life's good. Moving on to the next one. It just seems like uh, low calorie. Low right. stress. Low stress. Yeah, absolutely. Just you know, the game is so much easier if you you don't have to. You know, feel I was a, a, a martial artist, and I felt like if I got in a hole, dig down and just fight harder, fight harder. That's what I. Yeah, that doesn't always work. It doesn't work in this game. No, it doesn't, because you're putting too much stress on yourself to to produce. You got to let go, get out of your own way. In this case smooth like you've done this a thousand times and you looked at the hole again I looked at the hole again brother I'm, I'm impressed <laughs> see that's hey that's the secret isn't it I you, don't know we'll see it's working so far you, you know why because you relieve the stress of losing the ball as your focal point, you're now concentrating on the hole. So you're not worried about hitting the ball anyway, or too hard or too soft. You're just following through with a smooth swing that your body is interpreting. And that will give you much more success than, uh, you know, stressing out over the ball. There is uh, a little bit of a breeze. Definitely. Usually on this hole, when the pin is in the back, I hit six, even with this little bit of wind. But, uh, but again, my instinct is, is this going to make me jerk and try and put more on it? Because you, 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 think, you think you have less club than you need. Right, but it's, it's not a lot of wind. No, it's kind of crosswind more so than in your face. So yeah, it's probably 165. I'll give it a shot and see what it does here. So I felt like I was going to have to swing a full 7-iron on this par 3 and it turns out that I was just psyching myself. You dug it into the ground and that's not what you wanted, you know? Yeah, that's a lesson to be learned right there. I just, you buried it. Yeah. I'm going to choke right. down. I got I got way more club than you. You had a um, seven iron. Yeah. I've got a five iron. And it's 160, I'm going to say 167, 168. I'm gonna check down on my club, so I have way more power and I can travel a lot further, but a shorter backswing, crisp contact. Go in the hole, baby. 
So I pulled mine way left and I have this bunker and a very short landing area to be able to stop the ball. But luckily I pull it off. Now Mo, he hit his right over the pin. He had too much club and he manages to get inside of me. All day. And we both no make our putts. So much what, do you, what are you trying to do on this hole? This is a par five up a hill. Well, you know OB left and, and trouble big time left. If you're gonna air anything, it's to the right. But the truth of the matter is it's so wide up there for where I wanna drop my ball down about 250, 260, 270 and hope to get it to roll out. So I'm, I'm gonna to try to aim down the right side and try to draw it just a teeny bit. And if I fade it, okay. See now, that, to me that's interesting because you hit a draw off the tee. It's not a big hook. It's just a little baby draw. Yep. But that big tree on the right blocks me out. So, yeah. you know, I'm basically going at that 150 marker every time. And if I cut it a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the plan. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that's, I that's excellent. I overcut it sometimes. I no. it, blah, 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 blah. No, I think that's that's the right thing to do. There's no shame in that. Well, we both birdied it earlier, right? We did. We're the only two that <laughs> yeah. did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Perfect. That'll play very nicely. Oh, that's sweet. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> so I hit that pretty solid. Mo's uh, zapping it for me. I'm probably looking at a couple hundred, you know, 193. But I'm going to tell you guys something. Look at his cart. That ball is uh, 30 yards in front of me. Let me get it out of your way. <laughs> hey, that's in my way. I'm going to scull it into there. No, he just smoked that ball. So what I'm thinking about is actually hitting an extra club, a hybrid, just because I think it'll get through the grass easier than my, say, four iron. Yep. Um, Choke down on that sucker, though. Make sure you got uh, you got to hit that ball first, and you got to get past the grass that's right behind your ball. Yeah, there's a huge clump here. So Mo told me to choke up on the club because of the huge clump of grass, and I heard him, but I just did my thing, and I caught it so heavy and fat. Yeah, I think you bottomed out just before the the ball. Didn't get all of it. I just don't know how I can even get that out of there. We're always tough. So shoulder back swing, good contact, plenty of club. Oh, I left it out. Didn't turn it over. Oh, you still have a chip for eagle. But let me ask you. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a question. So you just hit one of. I mean, a massive drive on this hole, and you're saying that. I mean, you hit your, you play your five iron regularly from 170, because that's... Yes, that's, that's me, because I'm 58, and so it makes sense for me to hit more club than not enough. At least I have a chance of getting there and getting my distance. And I don't have to swing as hard. Huh? I'm sure you could hit it 190 probably, right? If I was swinging like John Daly. But, so you're just always about just the control and a manageable distance and... And making good contact. If I'm swinging too hard, I'm not going to return the face square. I, I, you still didn't. I, I swung easily now and I missed the ball. So that can happen at any point in time. But the object for me is always trying to square it up and get it on line. 88 yards. You've got to keep it below the tree, away from the bunker, and run it up there and know that it's going to bounce a little probably right to left because of the slope of the green up there. Okay, it should be pin high, just left of the pin about 15 feet. Stayed right there. Didn't didn't turn at all. 
so we were both one under par and here we ran into a little bit of trouble <laughs> more love that was a pull ow I try and get cute, I hit a tree, and I just compound my troubles. This is so bad. So believe it or not, I end up knocking that up uh, <laughs> about 12 feet from the hole. Mo's got this crazy downhill pitch and he ran it like 25, 30 feet past, whatever. But you know Mo, oh, this baby. homie can putt. Just broke off at the last second. Just misses it. That's okay. Kind of squeak right to the right a little bit. Right, Mo punches it out to the right. There you go. That is perfect. I'm on the left side. Ninth hole, little out to the right. That was a slash on my part. I'm tired. Beautiful. How to work every day. Right down the middle, high and in charge the way it should be. Not bad. So let me ask you a question, Mo. You've been uh, playing at a high level probably for 40 years. Oh no! Even, no. I would say only in the last fifteen years. You you've gotten better in your forties. Absolutely, yeah. I was in my best golf my my because I'm fifty eight now, fifties, and I've been playing since yeah I was about fifteen. So. Wow! So you continued to get better, and then in your forties you kicked it into height because I assumed you've been like this since a teenager. Oh no, absolutely not. I was I was all over the place. I was a a, a, a true hacker of the golf ball and. Uh, it was only until I joined a club and I took my game a little bit more seriously and I competed in events with other people that I I had to, you know, learn what it took to be competitive and yet not get in your own way at the same time. Meaning, just let all the pressure go of being in a tournament, find yourself and hit shots that are in play and give yourself a chance at making par. So it's fairways and greens and birdie putts. Holy cow, that is amazing. Had no idea. Okay, so that little tidbit from Mo that he wasn't always this level of golfer blew my mind. That's a pretty good shot, Mo. It's going to be, I think you're right. It's a cup outside to the right. Give it a chance. That worked. That worked. But it turns out that he's had his own swing evolution. And uh, I'll tell you, people who've gone through this, they're very humble. Mo is very humble. To win four men's club championships at Eaton Canyon, I think that that's very, very respectable. <laughs> Great putt. That's what I call an all-around good putt. Oh my God. <laughs> Christo asked me about how he's doing in his game, and I think the truth of the matter is he's doing incredibly well. He's learned so much. So I know his game is there. He's just uh, on the verge of believing in himself and knowing he can do it. Now he just has to think to himself, I'm just as good as anyone else. You forget that you're still learning the game and trying to figure it out. You're um, more than halfway there. He's there, he's at that point. It's just a matter of getting out there and just believing in himself. So having said that, I, I don't think he, uh, he has anything to worry about. The fact that he tried putting today, looking at the hole, led me to think, okay, he's experimenting and trying different things. And that's the one thing we always have to remember we're doing. It's a game in progress. 
Every shot's an experiment. It doesn't always work. It's how good our misses are, ultimately, and getting the ball in the hole and at the end of the day, having fun. He's doing that and uh, he's coming along really well, if you ask me. Hey guys, so let's cut to the chase. Here's my old golf swing. And here's my new golf swing. Five years ago, I started a YouTube channel and I wanted to improve my golf swing by using Ben Hogan's five lessons. Well, guess what? It worked. And along the way, I picked up over 8 million views on YouTube and I learned how to shoot under par. Unbelievable, right? Well, the great news is I have a brand new instructional video called The Hogan Code. In this video, I break down everything that I learned over my long journey to learn to swing like Ben Hogan. And now you can learn the very same techniques that I use to become the golfer I always wanted to be.